So I have a service call today out to a City Multi that's displaying a 6607 fault, which I'll chuck up, it's basically just like a comms fault. Um, now I don't know, I haven't worked out what unit it is yet, it's saying that the address is 051. So, I mean, this, this one here is running, this one's running, that one's not running, but those are linked. I'd say it's probably this one, but yeah, we'll open it up and we'll find out. So there we go, 51. Um, I think I'll turn this off because this is freezing. <laughs> All right, so straight up, no display on the board here. Can't see any flashing LEDs. So, yeah, first up we'll test power incoming. Okay, nothing. Let's, um, I'll test it. I'm gonna work out. Oh, there it is back there. So we'll test it at the uh, the um, isolator. Beautiful pipe run there <laughs> through the dirt. Lovely. Anyway, <clears throat> so obviously there was no power at the isolator either. But let's see if I can get you guys in there. It looks like oh yeah, look we've got water down the bottom there, eh? So um, if you look at that side, you can kind of see. Let's see if we can get some, like it looks like there's uh, been a bit of a bang that's gone on in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. So I reckon we've just had a bit of water ingress into this uh, isolator. I reckon we're gonna be looking at a um, tripped breaker, obviously, because we've got no incoming power either. Um, what I might do, yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you can see it all there. I'm just gonna test this isolator just to make sure we're not getting any readings between the um, between the phases, just to make sure this is okay. Um, obviously, I'm going to get them to come out and get someone to replace this. Um, but let's see if we can get it up and running. Anyway, we'll see what we got here. So, obviously, so I've isolated it here. This is my <coughs> excuse me uh, line side. This is load side. So, again, I've turned it off. I've checked. So we've got no power, but we're now on ohms. Just going to have a look. See what we got. So. No, that's fine. Oops. That's fine. We're looking for direct shorts here. And that's fine. Now I'm just going to test the earth, but I might need uh, two hands for that one. Earth to L1. Fine. Earth to L2. Fine. And earth to L3. Fine. I did those same checks on the, the line side and same readings, they're fine. Um, so I've switched the, isolator off, switched the isolator off. So before I go turn on power, I'm just gonna do a visual to see if there are any burn marks. Um, I might test some of the, um, oh man, my brain is just not working today, eh? Bloody <laughs> fuses, thank you. Um, test the fuses, just do a visual again, just to make sure it doesn't look like anything's blown. Um, and then we will go and find the the isolated breaker. So these ones visually look fine, but again, I'll just test them just in case. Okay. Visually, everything looks all right. Nothing stands out. All the fuses are fine. So we'll go find this breaker and we'll turn it back on. We got it open and condenser one tripped. So I've got that circuit breaker out there off. So we'll turn this on. That's a good sign. All right, looking good. Close that up and we'll turn it on. Before I turn power back on, I'm gonna put this back on. Moment of truth. All right. Ooh. Can see some lights, that's always good. Can 
any of the LEVs. Okay, we've definitely got power, that's good. Yeah, sweet. All right, we'll let this thing load up. We'll test our comms voltage. Awesome, our outdoor board is sending the correct 29 volts. Board's just powering up now. So I haven't reset power to anything else yet. There we go, may have just done. We'll go in and check the uh, check the thermostats and see if they're still in error. Like I said, I haven't reset power to anything else yet. I might at the end of this do a hard reset and then we'll probably end up plugging in as well with the tool and analyzing the, um, the data, make sure it's actually working properly. So I have only just turned everything on, uh, but I might go get the maintenance tool, plug it in and see what's going on. Okay, here we go. So we'll, um, we'll jump in. Okay, yeah, we'll jump in and we'll, we're gonna force all of this stuff to run. I'll try to do this with one hand and get a good uh, <laughs> good video of this one, but. Set a valve click. Fan started. You can hear the compressor starting too. So we'll go out of this. Now, this only uploads every 60 seconds. Very frustrating sometimes, but yeah, starting to ramp up. I'm sure you guys got to hear that. So I'm gonna let this thing run for 15 minutes before we even bother looking at this, probably maybe even longer to be honest. Um, Cause yeah, it, they can, you can, if you jump straight in, you'll see some weird reading sometimes. Um, so I usually I just let it sit for 15, 20 minutes to kind of stabilize out a bit and then, uh, and then start analyzing what I'm seeing. now so <clears throat> 10 15 the numbers looking pretty good so what do we got so th3 currently would be our inlet pipe temp so uh, i mean that's it's high but it's not not too bad what, what's our discharge temp so discharge temp 79.4 so it's pretty good um outlet temps are looking really good too you can see these have been rising as well we'll keep monitoring that um at the moment <clears throat> i'm looking at like our discharge superheats within range that's looking pretty good um, condensing temp, uh, almost 50 degrees. Again, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into the board and actually see what this thing's trying to maintain. Because um, unlike the Dacom one, this one doesn't tell you on the app, you, but you can basically confirm with the unit. Um, overall though, the Mitzi one, I much, actually much prefer uh, as, a, as a software and a tool to use. Anyway, we'll jump into the board and see what it's actually trying to maintain. So for anyone who doesn't know, it's that SW4 switch. <coughs> you basically just put in a whole bunch of things and uh, like change the numbers. They're in the service manual, it'll tell you if you're looking for a specific value, 
change the dip switch to that and it'll tell you what the value is. So off the top of my head, I'm trying to do this while remembering because I'm also filming. I'm pretty sure it's one zero zero zero. So we'll go one zero 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 one zero one. So that should tell me what my target condensing temp is. So target condensing temp's 49. And we're sitting at around 49.2, so that's looking pretty good. Honestly, most of this is actually looking pretty good. Like I said, you know, good inlet pipe temps, good outlets, the TD across the coil is good. My room temps are going up. Um, you know, everything is looking pretty good at the moment. Um, I'll keep monitoring for a little while, but honestly, I think this thing's running fine. Well, what we'll end up doing is just getting someone, uh, an electrician, sorry, to come back and replace that isolator. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Like, room temps are going up nicely. The rest of my te um, temps and pressures are all looking really good. So, what we'll do, we'll get out of this. We'll um, go drive operation, and we'll just set it back to heating. Uh, operation heat mode at 22. So eight. Transmit. Okay, you can hear that ramping down now. Alright, on the next cycle that should uh yeah, that should just say um, off, I guess, because it, it's it's pretty warm and it's already past the set point for, for most of the areas in that room. So we'll see what it says. It's just uploaded. And it says mode heating, standby. Yeah, sweet. We're good. I'm going to pack up here. Like I said, we'll get someone to come back and replace that isolator. But as it stands, this unit's working nicely now.